The beautiful village of Vrindavan, breathtaking in its rustic beauty. The cool green meadows, the clear skies, the beautiful gopis, flowing streams, the frisky cows, and playful boys made Vrindavan a heaven on earth. Since it was springtime, the breeze on the banks of the Yamuna was blowing very mildly, carrying the scent of different flowers. During the nights, moonlight filled the sky and spread everywhere making the banks of Yamuna appear bright and pleasing. One evening, the boys were seen playing in the ground. Come on boys, let's race! Race towards work! Look at that distant mountain. Whoever touches the mountain first will be the winner. Good idea. Okay, I am ready. All four of us will stand in a row. The moment I say start, we should all start running. Wait, wait. What happened? Everything is fine. Where is Krishna? He will not come now. It's getting darker. We will call him. His mother will yell at us if we call him now. True. His mother has already punished Krishna for all his pranks. Let him not be punished because of us. Okay, let's play. The boys stood in a row and were about to run. Get ready! Start! Run! All the boys stood in the same place. Hey! What happened? Why didn't you run? I don't know! I tried running, but I am standing in the same place. Me too! Now come on! Ready, steady, start, run! Again they all stood in the same place. Hey! I am scared! Me too! I am not able to run! Look! My hands are shivering! The sun is setting! People, People say, say that, that the demons, demons come, come out during, during this, this time. time. Stupid! Why do you make me more nervous? A strange sound was heard. Help! Suddenly, a hand touched boy two and three on their shoulders. Boy two screams. Who? Who is that? He sees the peacock feathered crown peeping from behind. Hey! Our hero has come! Along with him, Balram was also present. The boys jumped with joy. Hooray! Our hero has come! We will have a great time today! Krishna, how did your mother allow you today? 
Krishna smiles. When you played, didn't you think of me? Yes, we missed you a lot. That's why I came here with Balram. Boy two hugs Krishna. Krishna, why don't you join the race? You run and I will be the judge. You join them Krishna, I will be the judge. All four of them stood in a line. Get ready. Go! All the boys ran at the maximum speed. Krishna slows himself in between. He wants his friends to win. Boy 2 reached the foothill first. Gasping for breath. Later, boy 1 and 3 join him. I am first. First. Later, Krishna joins them. Well done. Krishna, why did you slow down in between? Without answering him, Krishna takes his flute and starts playing it. Krishna, why didn't you not answer the question? I know, I know. What do you know? It's because Krishna wanted me to win, not you. <laughs> Boy 3 takes a stick and starts chasing him. They go around in circles and Krishna laughs at it all. Balaram enters the scene. Hey guys, stop fighting. Krishna, it's getting late. Come on, let's go. When the boys were about to move, they saw some men and cattle approaching the mountain. Who are they? Man 1 approaches Krishna. Little one, can you please tell me how should we reach the next village? May I know who are you, sir? We have come from a very far off village. We are taking our cows for a special puja. Sir, the path which leads to the village is not a good one. And it is not a safe in the night. Better find a good place to stay for the night and leave tomorrow. We cannot go anywhere with our cattle. We will stay here under the mountain and leave in the early hours of tomorrow. The men made themselves comfortable under the tree. Krishna, Balram and their friends left the place. When they had gone some distance, they hear a strange sound. Screams. Help! Help! Narayana! Krishna and Balra start running back to the mountain. The boys followed them. Krishna reaches the place. They were shocked to see a huge snake with its mouth wide open. It was in the process of swallowing a cow. The men cried out. Wild screams did not bother the snake. One man tried to throw a huge stone at the snake. The snake hit him with its tail and 
and a man fainted. Krishna boldly holds the neck of the snake. The snake makes twists and turns but is not able to move further. The cow is released from the snake's hold. The snake bears its fangs and tries to attack Krishna. Balaram takes hold of its tail and twists it around. The snake hisses at Balaram. Krishna uses his fist to land a blow on the head of the snake. The snake falls down but springs up again. Balaram stamps the snake on its neck. The snake raises its head and opens its mouth wider. Krishna takes a huge stone and places it in its mouth. The snow crumbles to pieces. Krishna stamps on the snake and it falls down dead. Hooray! Boys whistle. Well done, Krishna. Well done. Balaram is great. Krishna is great. Krishna, such a huge snake. How did you manage to kill it? Balaram, are you not scared? From where did you get so much courage? When one comes forward to help others, great strength comes on its own. There is no fear also. Yes, Balaram is right. Krishna smiles. Krishna hugs his brother. The men come running to Krishna and Balaram. The people fall at their feet. Are you Krishna and Balaram? We did not know that. We have heard a lot about you. If you would have not been here, we would have been killed by now. Suddenly, the snake springs back to life. Everyone screams. The snake stands tall. And all of a sudden, disappears. In its place, a handsome man appears. He looks like a man from heaven. He has wings which show him to be a Gandharva. Greetings to you Balaram and Krishna. I am relieved from my sins today. I thank you for freeing me from my sins. I was undergoing torture all these days because of my sins. But when your lotus feet struck my head, I was freed from my sins. Who are you? What were you doing here? All the boys and the men were eagerly listening to the story of the Gandharva. I was a Gandharva. I used to come to this place regularly for playing with my friends. I had a strange habit of teasing people. One day when I was playing here, I saw a cow grazing here. I took a stick, 
struck its legs. It got hurt and fell down. A moment later, a sage came in search of the cow. Seeing his cow injured, he inquired about it. Gandharva, I don't know why my cow is unconscious. It gives milk to all inmates of our ashram. Can you please help me? I don't know. Why do you ask me? The sage got some leaves. squeezed them and applied the juice on the cow. The cow got up. The sage took the cow back to the ashram. The cow was actually limping. A few days later, the cow again comes to the place. Gandharva again hit it on the leg. The cow cries out of agony and falls down. Hearing the cry of the cow, the sage rushed to the place. Gandharva, what have you done to the cow? I don't know. You cheat! You have attacked the sacred cow! You would become a demon and wander around. You will eat cows and other human beings. Gandharva was shocked. He falls at the feet of the sage. Dear sage, please forgive me. I cannot take back my words. You deserve the punishment. As the Gandharva bleeds further, the sage's temper comes down. I cannot do anything. When Lord Krishna's feet touch your head, you will regain your original form and go back to heaven. The Gandharva was in tears after the curse. Years passed and finally he was relieved from the curse. Krishna, through your grace I am freed from my sufferings. Now I feel that the curse of the sage was no curse at all but a blessing. Had he not cursed me, I would have not assumed the body of a serpent and would not have been brought in contact with you. The Gandharva bows down before Krishna and Balaram and then flies towards the sky. The men and other friends of Krishna left Krishna and Balaram. Jai Balaram! Jai Jai Krishna! Krishna, you are our savior and also the savior of our cows. We will call you from now. Govinda! Govinda! Govinda means the savior of cows. Victory to Krishna! Victory to Govinda! 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 The boys and other men rejoiced over the victory of Krishna and Balaram. Balaram, Krishna and the other boys reach home. A snake is considered to be poisonous and deceitful. But human beings who are envious of others are even more vicious than snakes. The snake can be subdued 
by mantras and herbs. But a person who is envious cannot be controlled by anyone. Days pass full of fun and excitement. One day when Balram and Krishna were at home. Krishna, I heard from our friends that Nandapur garden is very beautiful. Yes, brother. Kanchan was telling me that it has lot of plums and berries. Kanchan told me that it is very far from here and we have to cross a huge great lake to get there. Brother, whatever it is, we will go. But how? Mother will not allow us that far. We will manage somehow. Tomorrow we are going. Okay? Okay? Balaram smiles. Krishna pleads with his brother. Please say yes, brother. But how will we do it? I will ask our friends to come home. Let them come. Then we will plan. Krishna's friends came the next day for playing at home. Krishna, why have you called all of us in a hurry? Balram is taking us to Nandapur. Hooray! Shh! We have to plan now. What shall we do? Krishna, I will tell your mother that I am taking you to my house. What an excellent idea! Your house is just a few meters away. <laughs> Kanchan, my mother will come searching for me in one hour. Krishna, why don't you say that we are going to a picnic? As it is, our group is quite popular here. With that sort of image, we will not be allowed to go anywhere. Brother, I have an idea. What it is? Mother will permit you. Since she thinks that you are very responsible, she will not question you. <laughs> hey, pulling my leg again, is it? You go out with our friends to the grazing yard. I will join you. How will you join us? Why do you question Krishna? He knows how to do it. Balaram took permission from his mother. Balaram, go watchfully and come back safely. Mother, can I take Krishna too with me? No, no, not at all. Let him be at home. I have had enough trouble with him. Krishna acts as if he was not interested in the proceedings. Balaram and other friends walked towards the Nandapur garden. Balram, Nandapur will be like heaven. Have you seen Nandapur? No, no. Have you seen heaven? Have I seen heaven? I have just heard about it. Who told you about heaven? My grandmother. Has she seen heaven? No, no. Her grandmother has told her. I believe. Then how do you compare Nandapur and heaven? <laughs> Krishna, will you give an answer for this? Hmm. It's not good leaving Krishna behind. Don't worry. 
He will join us any moment. Balaram had not even completed the sentence that Krishna was before them. Hey, I came back to join you guys. Ha ha ha! Krishna have come. Krishna, how did you come? How did your mom leave you? I told mom that Balram has gone without food and he will starve till evening. What happened? We all have our food packets. Even Balram brought it. Balram was searching for his food packet. Ha ha ha! I took it from brother without his knowledge. Balram pinches Krishna on his cheeks. None can deceive him. He is the greatest. The friends together reached a big lake. Wow! Such a huge lake! I can swim across the lake! Boy 1 hits Boy 2. Brother, how to cross this lake? This lake is full of crocodiles. Hey brother, look at that boat. Can we use that? Okay, let's get started with the journey. Krishna drags the boat and his friends occupy it. Balaram and boy too row the boat. A few minutes later, the boat begins to shake. The boys are scared. Balaram! Krishna! 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 I'm scared. The boat is about to sink. Uh -oh. Krishna waves his hand in the water. Suddenly, he catches something and jumps into the lake. The friends are shocked to see Krishna jumping into the lake. Balram yells out to him. Krishna! 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 Where are you? Balaram too jumps into the lake. There he sees Krishna fighting with a strange creature. The creature encircles Krishna with its tail. It has the face of a crocodile and body of a snake. Krishna uses his force to hold its neck. Balram enters and holds the tail of the creature. He pulls it and swings it in the water. Krishna punches the creature on its head. It falls down unconscious. There are a few bubbles seen outside. Meanwhile, the boys are in tears. Krishna! Krishna! Where are you? Balara! Krishna! What will we do now? The boys tremble in fear. The water splashes on all sides. Suddenly, Krishna comes out of the water. Krishna holds the strange creature in his hand. The boys hugged each other in fear. Oh no! Krishna! What is this? He is a demon who kills all the other creatures of this lake. Because of him, People were not able to reach Nandapur. The boy's hands shivered in fear, seeing the creature. Krishna, I am scared even to see him. Drop it, Krishna. Krishna throws the creature into the water. 
and hugs his brother Balaram. Brother, you are a truly great. There was a great relief for everyone after the killing of the demon. The boat sailed smoothly across the lake now. The brothers reached Nandpur. Trees of plantain, red berries and plums filled the area. The luscious grapes sparkled in the sun. The boys ran in all directions. Hooray! We have reached the place! It's heaven! Balram, please ask him whether he has seen heaven. Balram smiles. Krishna takes in a deep breath. What a fragrance! Heavenly fragrance! The aroma of the wild berries filled the air. A great many varieties of fruits filled the garden. The boys screamed in joy. The sun was shining in the sky. The place was full of colorful butterflies. A cool breeze swept across the garden, bearing the fragrance of the wild flowers. The bees were mad with the honey they drank. Immediately upon entering the garden, the boys were asking Balram to get the red berries from the tallest trees. Balram, can you get us those red berries? We have not tasted them before. Yes, brother. I too love those berries. Balaram began to pull down the branches of the trees, showing the extraordinary strength of his arms. The ripe fruits fell down on the ground. Upon hearing the sound of the falling fruits, the demon Denukasura, who was living there, in the form of an ass, was very much disturbed. He had been sent by King Kamsa to take over the forest area and kill Krishna. He was so arrogant that he killed all the people who came to that area. No one had the courage to step into the limits of the garden. The demon approached with great force. The whole place shook. All the trees began to move as if there were an earthquake. There was dust and storm everywhere. The Nukasura was huge, a fierce and fiendish donkey. The boys ran in fear. They hugged Krishna and Balaram. Hey! Who are you, mischief mongers? How dare you enter this forest? Who are you to question me? <laughs> the demon got wild at Balaram. You lilliputs! I will stamp you in a minute! I am the king of the jungle. Oh, I see. But the way, who accepted you as a king? The great Kamsa has made me the king of this jungle. Who is he to make you the king? Hey, 
How dare you speak against my Lord Kamsa? I will squeeze you dead and have you for lunch. Hey, who do you think they are? The great Balaram and Krishna of Vrindavan. You dare not stand in front of them. <laughs> He's stamped his feet on the ground and raised a dust storm. The boys ran in fear and hid behind Balaram and Krishna. Oh, so you are the Lilliputs Balaram and Krishna. I have been waiting here to finish you. This is a wonderful opportunity. You have fallen into a dead trap. I will finish your story today. <laughs> Enraged at the reaction of Balaram and Krishna, the demon kicks Balaram on his chest with his hind legs. Balaram was shocked. With great anger, the demon began to kick him more vehemently. Balaram immediately got hold of the demon's legs with one hand and wheeling him around, threw him over the tree drops. Well done, brother. <laughs> Boy two and three hid behind a tree in fear. There was dust everywhere. The trees started to fall down. The ground shook. The birds flew in the air. Leaves and flowers flew in the air. The demon came back in full force. He dashed against Krishna, attempting to kill him. Krishna stood straight without falling down. He stood like a rock. After the demon hit Krishna on his head, he himself groaned in pain and swung in circles. Excellent, Krishna! The demon comes charging at him again. You pygmies! Are you trying to play with me? I will show my powers to you. He shook a tree. Immediately, the whole tree collapsed and turned into ashes. He started uprooting the trees one by one. Enraged by this, Balaram grabbed his hind legs and swung him in circles. While he was being wheeled around by Balaram, he lost his life. When Balaram threw the demon, the demon's dead body hit the biggest palm tree and sent it crashing. The tree fell upon another tree and brought it down. That tree brought another tree down. It appeared as if a great hurricane had swept through the forest. So many trees had crashed down. This exhibition of extraordinary strength is astonishing because Balaram is the personality of Godhead, the embodiment of strength and power. The demon of the ass form had at least be sent to rest. Hooray! Hooray! Jai Balram! What strength and power! Krishna hugs Balaram. Brother, amazing feat! Excellent! The boys had their bath in the lake 
and had their fill of fruits and nuts. Balaram, did you know the demon earlier? Balaram smiles. Krishna knew. That's why he wanted to come here. I knew about three dangerous demons. Where are they? Tell me. They are very near me. Where? Haven't you seen your face reflected in water? Krishna, Krishna. The boys chase Krishna. And Balaram watches the fun. When the sun was about to set, the boys, along with Krishna and Balaram, reached home. A few days after the killing of Denukasura, people began to come into the garden to collect fruits. and animals began to return to graze the succulent grass that grew there. A few days passed. In the outskirts of Vrindavan, there lived a sage. He had heard a lot about Krishna and wanted to see him. He decided to leave his place and go to Vrindavan to meet Krishna. He came to Vrindavan. At his age, the journey was arduous. He did not know Krishna's house. He searched here and there and finally saw the majestic Govardhana hill there. What a huge hill! This is so beautiful. This must be the Govardhana hill which Krishna lifted to protect the whole village when it rained heavily. Govardhana hill reminded him of Krishna so much that he became almost mad with love for Krishna when he saw it. In such a state he did not know how to find out where Krishna lived. There is no one here from whom I can inquire. How will I reach Krishna's house? After walking around the hill, the sage went to a pond and took his bath. He then sat beneath a tree to take his evening rest. I am too hungry. What will I do in this unknown place? While he was sitting beneath the tree, thinking about Krishna, an unknown cowherd boy came with a pot of milk. He placed it before the sage. and spoke to him with a smile. Great sage, you look so tired. May I know where you come from? Dear boy, I come from a far off place. I want to go to Krishna's house. Can you tell me the way? Sure, but give me some time. I have some work here. I will come and take you. Okay, I will wait. The boy handed over the pot of milk to the sage. Please drink this milk. What kind of meditation are you doing? The sage was looking at the boy without answering. Just looking at this boy gave him great joy. Hearing his sweet words, he forgot 
all of his hunger and thirst. What are you looking at? You didn't answer my question. Little boy, who are you? Where do you reside? And how do you know that I was fasting? Sir, I am a cowherd boy and I reside in this village. In my village, no one goes hungry. In this village, a person can ask for a food from others and eat it. Some people drinking only milk. But if a person does not ask anyone for food, I give him all the eatables. Surprising! The woman who come here to take water saw you and they gave me this milk pot and sent me to you. The sage was immensely pleased. Thank you, my son. I must go very soon to milk the cows, but I will return and take back this milk pot from you. Shall I leave now? Thank you, my boy. Saying this, the boy left the place. Indeed, he suddenly could be seen no more and the sage's heart was filled with wonder. After drinking the milk, the sage washed the pot. and put it aside. He looked towards the path, but the boy never returned. He waited till evening. The sun was setting. The sage could not sleep. He closed his eyes and chanted the name of Krishna. Because of fatigue, he closed his eyes and slept. He slept and had a beautiful dream. In the dream, he saw the same boy. The boy came before him, held his hand and took him to the jungle. Dear boy, where are you taking me? Shh, come with me. They crossed the dense forest. The boy showed the sage a bush. I reside in this bush and because of this, I suffer very much from the severe cold, rain, wind and scratching heat. Please bring the people of the village and get them to take me out of this bush. Take me to the top of the hill and make it my home. Please construct a home on the top of the hill. Has no one given you a shelter so far? No, what to do? For many days I have been observing you and I have been wondering when will the sage come here to serve me? I have been expecting your arrival due to your sweet love for me. But I don't know who you are. Have you not thought of me? No. Have you not called me? No, my boy. I don't know who you are. But you look so very charming. Close your eyes and see. The sage closed his eyes. He was able to see Lord Krishna smiling. 
he was not able to believe that the boy was none other than Krishna. He opened his eyes, but he could not find the boy. Krishna! Krishna! He was not able to see him. The sage hears a voice. Dear sage, I am your Krishna. Do not worry. I am always with you. The priest who was taking care of me hid me in this bush in the jungle. Then he ran away as he feared the attack of enemies. Since the priest ran away, I have been staying in this bush. It is very good that you have come here. The sage was in tears. The sage woke up from his dream. Krishna! Krishna! Where are you? Krishna! Please forgive me. I saw you but I could not recognize you. He fell down on the ground in tears. The sage cried for some time, but then he fixed his mind on executing the order of Krishna. After taking his morning bath, the sage entered the village. He went to the forest. He thought about his dream and reached the place. There was a bush. The sage was surprised to see the idol of Lord Vishnu there. Tears flowed from the eyes of the sage. Krishna, you are the Lord of the universe. Krishna, how fortunate I am to have seen you with my eyes. The sage called on the people of the village. Lord Vishnu is lying in the bushes. Let us go there and rescue him from that place. The bushes are very dense. We will have to cut through them and clear the growth. After hearing this, the people accompanied the sage with great enthusiasm. According to his directions, they cut down the bushes, cleared a path and entered the jungle. When they saw the deity covered with leaves, and grass, they were all struck with wonder and joy. They carried the deity and placed it on top of the hill. A beautiful temple was constructed there. The sage was immensely satisfied. After completing the task, the sage went in search of Krishna to Vrindavan. Vrindavan was buzzing with activity. The sage went to the house of Yashoda. He saw Balaram playing with his toy. Dear son, can you tell me where Krishna is? May I know you who are you, sir? I come from far off land to meet Krishna. I saw him in my dream. Balaram looked at him curiously. Krishna, 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 where are you? Krishna comes out. He was eating butter. Hmm. Tell me, brother. This sage has come to see you. He says that he has seen you yesterday and also in his dream. What?
Krishna looks puzzled. He was here with me yesterday. We didn't go out yesterday. Krishna looked at him curiously. The sage was amazed by the charm of Krishna. He resembled the cowherd boy who brought him milk. Sir, please come in and have food. No, no, I just came to see Krishna. Great sir, did you see me yesterday? Yes, my lord. Was I wearing the same dress? No, you were in a cowherd's dress. Where were you yesterday? I was outside Vrindavan. But sir, I was in Vrindavan. But then, who gave me milk? Sir, I think you are very tired. Please wait. Krishna gives some fruits to the sage. Dear sage, please have all this. Thank you, Krishna. The sage looked affectionately at Krishna. He thanked him and left. But he was highly confused. The boy whom he saw resembled Krishna. Who could that be? Is Krishna the same boy who took me to the bush? Thinking about Krishna, the sage reached the outskirts of the city. He was happy at having seen the charming Krishna. He sat down as he was tired. The weather is hot and this makes me tired. I am feeling hungry. What will I do now? He thought about the fruits given by Krishna. Hurriedly, he opened the cloth which had the fruits. He had the surprise of his life. Both fruits had changed form. One was in gold and another was in silver. He took the golden fruit. In that, he could see Vishnu smiling. And he took the silver fruit, in which he could see Krishna smiling. He was not able to control himself. Tears flowed from his eyes. He fell to the ground. Krishna! Krishna! The sage understood that the boy whom he had seen as a cowherd was none other than Krishna, who is an incarnation of Lord Vishnu. The sage left for his village with great peace in his heart. <laughs>